Let's now take a look at question number seven. We'll solve it using the variable approach method. The first thing we do is change or modify the original condition right here. If there's Tom and John. For Tom, we'll have V1 times T1 is equal to D1. And for John, we have V2 times T2 is equal to D2. We want to know whether T1 is greater than T2. So we have six variables right now. Two velocities, two times, and two distances. And we already have two equations. One here, one here. This means that we need four more equations because we want the number of equations to match the number of variables to be able to solve for the variables. But usually conditions one and two only give one equation each, making it likely that E is going to be our answer. Now E actually is the answer, but let's convince ourselves of that by looking at conditions one and two together. T1 rewritten would be D1 over V1, and we want to know whether that's greater than D2 over V2. Well, D1 apparently is 50, so 50 plus D2 over 50 plus D2, and we want to know whether that's greater than D2 over V2. We'll multiply, we'll cross multiply. What we get is 50 plus D2 times V2 greater than 50 plus V2 times D2. Or in other words, 50v2 plus d2v2, whether that's greater than 50d2 plus v2d2. These two guys disappear. So ultimately what we want to know is whether 50v2 is greater than 50d2, or whether v2 is greater than d2. We still can't figure it out because we don't know either v2 or d2. That's why e is going to be the answer according to the variable approach method, which is currently the most recognized and efficient way of solving GMAT math problems.